Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, thank you very much for being given the opportunity to speak here. I'm very, very happy about it. And I'm having a great time. Thank you all for existing. Um, <laughs> and let me also say that there is a phone lying here, which probably belongs to some of you. So maybe, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, this is a, a project joined with uh, Michael Kreschnick. And um, when I talk about uh, the Karevich K-theory, what I mean is what other people call the K-theory of varieties, but you know, this is such an ambiguous term, right? If you write a paper on the K-theory of varieties, you know, you don't know whether that means the K-theory of some specific variety or the growth between the varieties. Okay, so what, what's that? So I'll just give you K naught of varieties, the definition. So suppose K is a field, and mostly this will be a perfect field, actually sometimes the complex numbers. And what you do is you just take Create classes for every k variety, and there are various variations. We could use reduced varieties or so. Usually, it doesn't make much of a difference. And now you impose a relation. You say that x is the same as z plus y whenever. I know, so whenever there exists a closed, open decomposition of x. Yeah, so with these signs, I mean, this is a closed immersion, this is an open immersion. So you decompose your variety in an open and the closed complement. For all of these, you impose a relation, and this is the K-theory of varieties. All right, K-theory of varieties. So why is you? Sorry? Why is you? Why is you? Thank you very much for pointing out that there was a mysterious letter. Okay, and you can even turn this into a ring. You just define x times y should be the class of just the product of x and y. So now you have a ring, and obviously this looks very similar to a definition which is very close to all of our hearts, right? I mean, if instead of a decomposition into an open and a closed, this was a short exact sequence, we just have the definition of k naught. So if anybody is interested, in such a group, then obviously the right community to ask should be us, right? Because we are, have expertise in working with these things. But then usually we're not just working with K0, we're working with an entire spectrum. And this was done by Ina Zakarevich, who is in the audience. So in particular, if you have any technical questions, the great thing is that I can just directly deflect them. <laughs> so, so thanks to the work of Ina, We now have a spectrum, an E infinity ring spectrum, the K theory of varieties. And obviously, um, if you take pi naught of this, you get exactly that ring. So this is hopefully clear. Yeah, and then you can imagine when you develop a theory like this. So I don't know whether this actually happened, but I imagine you invent something like this, and then maybe you submit the paper, and then you get a grumpy referee, and they ask you, yeah, but is it actually not trivial? So I don't know whether that happens, but uh, at least that would be consistent with the typical referee experience I get. So you should wonder, what is this? Okay, so what are the homotopy groups of this? Well, so first of all, we should have, of course, the case i equals to zero, which, as I just told you, is k zero of r. And um, just because we are uh, usually working with algebraic K theory, let me just point out for this thing, there are many, many, many open questions. Um, it's very interesting, but at any rate, we know for sure that this is huge. And if you quotient out actually by the affine line, this thing becomes isomorphic to a polynomial ring with Z coefficients and infinitely many polynomial variables. So this is huge. And this will be more than I mean, this, this is zero divisors and everything. So it's kind of even bigger, right? If you have an infinite polynomial ring as a quotient. Okay, so this is huge. Okay, and then hmm, what happens in the higher homotopy groups? And for quite a while, nothing was known. So it could have been that these are all zero. But then luckily, Campbell, who is, that's Jonathan Campbell, Wilson, and Ina, exhibited classes in the degrees of the shape 4s plus 3. So these classes are torsion. 
So the way how this works, so how do you produce classes? I, I don't remember which talk, but we already had one talk where we were reminded a good way to produce elements is to map into a space and map out of the space. I think there was a talk on Monday. Um, so how does this work? The idea is to take the sphere spectrum, map this into this in, into the K-theorem varieties, and then you have to do some hard work to detect that the image, that this is not just the zero map, that the image really produces non-trivial classes. But of course, when you do this with the sphere spectrum, the only chance is that you produce torsion classes. Okay, so that's very interesting. And um, the result I'm going to tell you about is that we now also can produce some non-torsion classes. Um, you don't know all classes of torsion. Sorry? We do not know all, all no, no. classes of Sorry, torsion. you're right. Uh, so there exist torsion classes. Yes. And there exist various constructions. So there's this, and then also uh, Ina had a, has a second construction by, with the permutations, but it also produces torsion classes. Okay. And so the theorem that I'm talking about today, it says uh, for all odd n at least three, the dimension of the k-theory of varieties over the complex numbers tensored with q is infinite. It's k-i? Is yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, but what I really want to talk about, so um, uh, kind of the thing, the story I really want to tell you, is not so much this, I, I rather would like to advertise this as an application of for what I'm going to talk about, is rather that we generally, for proving this, we had the idea that we wanted to connect the K-theory varieties with ordinary algebraic K-theory. So the way these classes are produced, this actually comes from Borel's construction, or from Borel's cons uh, computation of the ranks of K-groups of number fields. And we kind of import these, these classes which belong to this into the K-theory of varieties. And this is, I think, kind of the main story I want to tell you. And then this is one application, but we hope that there might be more um, that you can do with this construction in the future. Um, any questions so far? So the, the yeah? Well, is there anything known about K1 then? <laughs> Um, a convenient gap in your... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think the things are known about K one. So I think Ina has a paper, for example, with a generator relator presentation, and I think from the computations with the boundary maps, it also follows that K one must be non-trivial, right? Yeah, and you can, there's various techniques you can use for trying to construct interesting elements in there. But pretty much any auto any automorphism of a variety represents an element. And then you can actually do more if you have a piecewise automorphism of variety that also represents an element. And so you, uh, the question is, do you construct these then difficult part of them to join that are non-trivial? But K1 is generated by piecewise automorphism. Yeah. Does that answer What is a piecewise automorphism? It means, yeah, it means you stratify your variety and then on each of the strata you have an automorphism. And this can be glued together just by... <laughs> Kind of this relation with those models. <laughs> I'm not just complaining. Uh, that, that's not correct. Um, <laughs> you, you have two stratifications with isomorphic strata, with, um, mm -hmm. but that's not. But you don't, it's not an ice automorphism on each strata. You can have like, okay. you know, take two different points out of an out of an affine plane, and then like translate and move the points around, and that's fine. There's another question. Yes, in the chat by Marcus Lam. Um, mm -hmm. So, what about rational quadrimensional things? When the yeah, we, we cannot say we cannot say anything about this. Okay, even when there's a finite field. I know what what odd dimensional? Yes. Ah, uh, so, ah. Wait. So, what what am I supposed to? I mean, this is about odd. What am I supposed to change? Ah, that's true. Finite finite field rather than C. yeah. Yeah. So we we have the same result also over F P bar. But I just thought I will just ah, talk. same result over FP bar. So this infinite is not related to the rational K theory of C being huge. Is it the rational? No, the um, it's the base field will actually not matter so much. It's just that you have to construct your varieties over a certain field, and therefore that it's useful to have this field big. But the K theory of that field does not really play such a play a role. Okay. Any other questions? 
Okay, cool. So um, I thought um, maybe I should also motivate a tiny little bit why people are interested in this at all. So this part of the talk has nothing to do with the result. It's just you know to kind of justify why this is a cool thing. So just as a little intermezzo, um, I could first tell you that uh, this group was it occurs first in the 1960s in a letter from Grotendieck to. Seha, and this was the time Grotendieck was playing around with the first idea to come up with motives, you know, like these Chao motives kind of originate roughly from this time. So you would kind of imagine that maybe such a construction would be coming up if you kind of play around with these ideas. But what really kind of brought this to the limelight is a result of Konsevich. So um, let me just recall the following definition. Um, suppose you have uh, x1 and x2 smooth proper over the complex numbers, then uh, x1 is called a equivalent to x2 if there exists such a diagram with uh, proper birational morphisms such that the pullback of the canonical bundles uh, are isomorphic. And then Konsevich proved in 95, um, K ration, K equivalent. So this K has nothing to do with K, uh, with K theory. It comes from the canonical bundle also being called K. K equivalent varieties have the same Hodge numbers. After first, there was a result by Bateria that they have the same Betty numbers. Um, and the way this is. Um, Sorry, why is any variety? Um, yeah, but these are proper virational maps. So the, the X, and, I mean, it's quite constrained. Uh -huh. So why does it not have to be smooth? Uh, I, also, I think it all has to be smooth. Well, it could be smooth. It could be. Oh, over yeah, CLK, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can always dominate. <coughs> Um, so the way how this is, um, so how is, how is this proven? Well, Konsevich actually proves something stronger. So you have the, these k naught of varieties, and you can define a map out of it to the k-theory of the rationals, or if you want, the k-theory of mixed host structures, and you just send your variety to the alternating sum of compactly supported cohomology. Right, that defines the class in, in the rational K-theory. And so in order for this to be well-defined, of course, you have to check something, but the only relation you have to check is the one here. And if you have such a long exact, if you have a, such an open closed decomposition, you have a long exact sequence in compactly supported cohomology, which gives you exactly an additive relation here. So this is a well-defined map. And then the actual proof strategy of Konsevich is you study a kind of completion of this thing, which I don't want to define carefully for you, but it's called the motivic integrate value integration group. The motivic integration value ring. Um, and he proves that K equivalent varieties are the same element in this completed version. I'll just write this. This is still well defined, then you can use this map, and then from here you can extract the Hodge number. So this is how this proof works. And so the reason why this k naught bar is interesting is, of course, that there are many other maps which map out of this completed uh, k bar, and Konsevich's proof works for all of them. So you get k uh, um, equivalent varieties have the same invariance for anything which factors over this. And probably the most popular application of all of this is for Calabi Yau varieties. They have trivial canonical bundles, so this condition is trivially satisfied. And so you get the result that if you have two Calabi Yaus, which are birational, they must have the same Hodge numbers or the same values for any invariant which factors over this. So this is my end of the motivational section. Are there any questions about this? Okay. I, I have a question. What about, yeah. I mean, now, now that you're motivated, and what about the higher homotopy graphics? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What no, that's, that's a very good question. And for this one, would need something like higher homotopic integration. And let me maybe not talk about this and leave this as a magical uh, imagination in the room. But thank you for the question. Any other questions?
Okay, so this was just motivation. So now let's really get started um, and then go in the direction of this theorem. Um, let me also just Can very, very briefly tell you, yeah. So slightly back to the motivation section, how does this relate to like K0 of the EM or something like that? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you can instead of um, so if you go to KQ, you would just use, for example, some singular homology or so, as I wrote here, or you can equip with this mixed, mixed touch structures, but you could, of course, also have the idea to send your variety to its attached motive. That also works. And there are even more versions. I, I mean, I can't tell you all. I mean, so for over finite fields, you can also do point counting that gives a map to Z because that's respected by every open closed decomposition. I think you can also uh, attach some triangulated categories and go to the K theory of some, I, I don't even know, but there are many variations. Okay, um, so maybe just one quick word about how is this um, K theory of varieties, how is this um, spectrum defined? Uh, I, will, I will not recall this, and also it will turn out that for most of what I'll tell you, you won't need the definition, so that's good. Um, the first definition is by Nina, and she produces an explicit uh, gamma space. This is one approach. And then a year later, so I think that's 2014, right? Okay. And then a year later, Jonathan Campbell came up with another construction, which is modeled on the S construction. So maybe just uh, in your brains, imagine for a second the Waldhausen S construction. That room, you see this big simplicial diagram of categories where all the monomorphisms are the arrows. And now just imagine all the objects in there replaced by varieties and all the monomorphisms being replaced by closed immersions. And you kind of have an idea how to define a simplicial object. And then, well, then something weird happens because in these sequences, the other map goes in a different direction. So it's not a Waldhausen category. You can't use the standard setting. You have to develop everything afresh. I'll leave this as an exercise to you, or you can read the papers which have been written about this. Um, good. Any more uh, questions about the definition of the case of varieties? I, I know this was kind of quick, perhaps, but I think you can imagine maybe. Or not. This completion is that with respect to the F1 one. Um, yeah, so um, it, it's like you consider varieties. Um, Okay, so you can invert the affine line, and then you consider varieties multiplied with an inverse of the affine line, and then compete with respect to their virtual dimension. Is that precise enough? So, any other questions? Okay, cool. So, um, so let's come to the idea, and I'll just um, erase one part for that. <laughs> So, I mean, so the idea is we want to use algebraic K theories, equivalent K theory, and somehow you want to map it into this K theory of varieties, but you also have to map out of it because we would like to produce something like a section. So, how could you do this? So, let's, as a toy case, for the moment, let's A denote GM or maybe an abelian variety. You can think about both of these cases, a little bit different, but very similar. Okay, now what you can do is maybe you can create a map from the ordinary Quillen K theory. So I'll just write it in big letters. This is Quillen K to the K theory of varieties. And the idea could be well, one way to, uh, to approach the K theory is to work with a symmetric monoidal category and your group complete. So here, this would be something like three modules, three Z modules. I'll just write this with a direct sum, okay? And you could map this to copies of A, um, but with respect to the product of varieties. So just to, to illustrate maybe what this means. So the object Z to the N would be mapped to, for example, yeah, to, to A times A times A, N copies. And then, you know, if you do K theory, you would go to the maximal internal groupoid, you remove all the non-isomorphisms. So the thing which acts on this would be GLN Z, this would be the automorphisms acting on this. But that of course also acts on the variety, just because that it would do that for on any group variety. So I mean, if you imagine the case of GM, right, you have uh, an uh, endomorphism of GM, which is just multiplication. So the automorphisms are just plus and minus one. But of course, for higher rank, you get more. And, but for an abelian variety, this would work the same way. 
Is this convincing or do you have questions about this? So this goes from the additive structure on KC to the multiplicative one on K. So, <laughs> yes, so yes, yes. K here is the underlying space, not the spectrum. I assume. Yeah, so uh, exactly. So it's not yet clear what the relation is between these two things, but let's just imagine for a moment. So I, I group complete also here, then I get, get a map, and then I somehow have to map into that, and I'll explain that in a sec. You have the rigidity theorem. I was what? Well, I said you have the rigidity theorem for the varieties. I have what theorem? Rigidity theorem. Which? which uh, I, I, well, I don't understand. Morphism is the varieties which map zero to zero is a morphism. Uh, yes, so the, um, the all the maps which I have here acting uh, on these, these come from translations and then automorphisms. Of course, if you talk about a variety, you don't have a fixed, uh, no neutral element, but yeah. So not all the maps which exist here come from that. So far, so good? Okay, good. Um, and you haven't actually made the map. Right. So I have not yet made, made the map. Uh, this is just like I'm trying to sketch the idea how to how to get to it. And then the if you want to somehow import this, you also have to ch check that the map which we want to produce going in here that this is non-zero. And the thing we really would be dreaming about is having a section. So we also need a map which goes out of this. So let me maybe just write modules over Z, which are finally generated, but because that's a regular ring, that's of course the same. But so um, as is suggested by what I erased, um, you could consider the, um, maybe I just, you could consider the cohomology of a variety, right? I could send a variety to the class of its cohomology, right? That has no reason to be protective, but this is something, something which should work. And this is a module over Z finally generated. And this should, um, yeah, so, so this brings you back to something which is Quillen KC. So this is. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, and here you have Zakarevich. Okay, but of course, if, you, if this is supposed to be a section, then the composition should be the identity, which it is clearly not. But let's just have a look at what the composition is. <laughs> So if I start with my group variety A, when you use the K star, you mean some minus one to the high H I, is that what you mean? I'm being vague, yeah. So if I if I would write this down with K naught, then this would end up being the alternating sum of the of the classes of the individual homology groups. But you could also imagine that you would use actually a complex so representation. You just take the chain complex. Yeah. For example. yeah. I mean, the, the next idea will be to lift this. I mean, to, to, you want something which is not just on K0, right? So on, on the entire yeah, K theory yeah. spectrum, so. But, but sorry, may I ask again? I mean, I don't even understand it on K0. I mean, either you take some connective cover of KZ or you map to some localization of KVAR, right? But then the second map doesn't exist anymore. So. Some can, can you either you invert the elements like you map to? Yes. To so localize, or this you... is a good model on the one connective cover. Yes, I will do that. I but as, because in the theorem, we're only trying to produce classes in high degree. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take okay, connective so covers. It's really a thing on the one connective cover, but you're giving us a Pinot picture, which doesn't exist. Okay. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> the way I'm trying to it, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. No, no, I, I'm happy with that. Why, why is it, sorry, why is it on the one connective cover? I mean... Just three mo projective modules over Z are free. Well, you just wait for him to explain. Yeah, yes. yeah but there was a question. Uh, just ignore it. <laughs> 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 okay. so, yeah, so I'm kind of giving you the picture on K0, which then later we won't be using. But I mean, often in K theory, it's like you see what happens on K0, and then you get an idea what the construction on the entire K theory spectrum might be. So I'm hoping that you can kind of a little bit interpolate this, and I'll be a bit more precise about this later, but this is at the moment we're just collecting uh, the idea, okay? So what I wanted to do, so I have a map which is incoming and yeah, true, this only exists on the one connected cover and maybe one could more work more there, but I don't care because I don't need that for the theorem. Um, then I'm doing this. 
this is something, yeah, it's an interesting question whether this exists. I'll talk about it later. So you go to the cohomology, what happens? So you start with your abelian variety or GM, then this goes well to the abelian variety. Ah, no, sorry, I, I wanted to start with Z. So one copy of Z goes to the one copy of the abelian variety. Now in the Zakharevich K theory, it's an honest abelian variety. And now this gets mapped to the cohomology of that. But of course, the cohomology of an abelian variety, that's just an exterior power, right? This is H1. A Z. Okay, and this is something like Z to G, right? It looks like this. I mean, the uh, entire exterior algebra. And this also works for GM, and then if G is one half. Um, but whatever you see the picture, it's like Z goes to an exterior power. So, and an exterior power, you know, I could write this at the, as the individual pieces in the um, individual summons. So this is a little bit, and this is hyper vague now. It's like I'm, I'm sending a class here to something like one plus the class plus, and then I'm having exterior power operations, something like this. It's super vague, yeah. But our idea was, is it with signs? Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, True, so this should. Um, yeah, I can just. Um, <laughs> okay, so it's, it's super vague, but I hope that the idea is clear. It seems so. We, we wanted a section which is not what we're getting, but we're still getting something which is maybe somewhat controllable. This expression. Of course, this expression doesn't literally make sense, right? Because it looks like an infinite sum. Yeah, okay. Um, and then our original idea, but it turns out that this has to be fixed in various ways, is um, remember how, how Bedesen introduced motivic, K, motivic cohomology originally with rational coefficients. What he did was he was taking K theory, then you make it rational, and then you look at Adam's eigenspaces. And these eigenspaces give you the individual rational motivic cohomology groups. But exterior power operations are very close to Adam's operations. So the feeling was that, hey, maybe we're lucky and on the individual eigenspaces, which you would get when you go to rational K-theory, this would just be multiplication with the corresponding eigenvalue on whatever degree you are in. And if this thing is just multiplication with <coughs> some rational numbers, this is probably controllable. Why is that infinite? Sorry? Why is that infinite? It's, so I, I apologize for being very vague, but if I wanted to write this down as a map, then I, I don't have any a priori control in what exterior powers I have. So in order to be correct, I would have to use all, have all exterior powers. Of course, on a module of a fixed rank, they will eventually vanish. So it reduces to a finite uh, sum, but on the entire spectrum, I can't pre-control the rank. So that's the, and this might already give a, give a hint how one can probably solve this, right? It would take some co-limit of a rank bounded, but it turns out that we don't even need this. So is there a question about this? Hopefully many, because it's very vague. <laughs> But so that's, that's the rough idea. Yeah, it's, um, the map seems somewhat controllable. Okay. Uh, I need to erase the board anyway, so this is perfect timing for you to maybe have more questions. You said you could do the construction of a FP bar. We don't have any critical homologies there. Um, yes, so we will, I'll, I'll come to that. And also we'll, we'll get rid of these things later because the, the exterior powers are also annoying. This composite now is a map which turns addition into <laughs> multiplication. Sorry? This is a composite now is a map which turns addition into multiplication. Yes, so the, the, I still didn't tell you how to go into this, but the first map has a lot of the vibe of an exponential map. And so this is what the whole map looks like. And actually we'll replace this thing by making some kind of logarithm map here. So. This will be the we actually do. Any more questions? Okay. 
yeah, so as Thomas has already pointed out, um, we encounter, the, so this, this picture, this has to be repaired quite a bit before this can be made work. And the first problem we encounter is here, because why does this even map there? Um, you can think about it if you have a, if you have a class here, then, so suppose you take one copy of Z, then because this is a group completion, you also have in K0 a class of minus Z corresponding to the minus rank one virtual module. But if this goes to powers of the abelian variety, then what should that go to? It should go to one divided by the abelian variety. And there is no reason why this should exist. So the first drama is that you have to replace this construction by something more nasty. And I'll now write it down in general because, um, and not just with Z, because as you might have already have anticipated, the trick of using an abelian varieties is that you actually can have many more endomorphisms than, than just Z. So, let's, so now it's getting more precise. So K is a perfect field. A is an abelian variety, when that's just as simple as well. Over K. And now later we'll be interesting to use abelian varieties with complex multiplication. So let's already take O to be the endomorphism ring of the abelian variety. Good. Now the actual construction is you go from the K theory of this ring. So you want to go to K bar, and I, you can already extrapolate from what I wrote there what, what the rough idea is. So you start with three O modules, direct sum, con consider this as a symmetric monoidal category, and you go to powers of the abelian variety with respect to this product. And then this maps in here, but sadly it doesn't because you the group completion with respect to multiplication needs negative powers. So the only way to save this is by inverting the class of the abelian variety. So what I mean by this is the K theory of varieties has a class which in K naught, pi naught, which represents the abelian variety, and we're just inverting this class. So K theory of varieties is a ring spectrum, so you can do this. Only now you get this map. But this is of course a little drama for what we want to prove, because now we have this very annoying localization here. Right? This will be trouble for us, right? Suddenly we have this here, and then also we need to invert something there because otherwise this map might not exist. So that's annoying. We'll have to fix this later. But for the moment, this is all we can get. Yeah, it's, it, it, there's no hope that this exists without um, inverting the abelian variety. Um, maybe for time reasons, I will not tell you more about this, but you can ask if you have a question. Okay, so is this using the model like BGL plus or something or KO? Is that the idea? Exactly. I am. Um, so you can first get a map of BGL to something by doing this. That's yes. The idea. And then, then you need to. So the plus part. So what I. Is that what you do? Is that what you do? Or just, I mean. Okay, let me tell you, tell you what. Tell me how you do it. Uh, if it works, I'm just asking if that's what you're doing. I'm, I'm, uh, let me answer in, in two, two, uh, two steps. First of all, I, I forgot to write something. So if you want to, to have a hope that this is a map of spectra, then because this turns addition into multiplication, you should also take units here. Huh? So this is a, a ring spectrum. If your varieties is a ring spectrum, you use that structure to invert the abelian variety, but then you use units, with, with this, which is an ordinary spectrum. And only here you can expect there to be a map because addition goes to multiplication. Yeah, so, okay. so what I first wrote, this was wrong, sorry. So you have to do this, but this is not even what we do because we are very lazy. Oh, I am very lazy. Michael is not very lazy, but <laughs> we are very lazy. And so what we did, only all we need for the construction is to have this on space level. And we do pretty, pretty much what you were suggesting. Um, so we're working with BGL um, plus, and we're realizing this thing has, and if you go to the underlying space, it's an H space, and then you can just by universal property of the plus construction map from BG and BGL into an H space, you can factor it over the plus construction. This gives you a map from the one connected cover. So I should, should be writing this uh, into here. And then this has also become the one connected Does this answer the, the question? I see. Okay, so you're really mapping BGL plus by saying you have a map of BGL to an H space and then yes. that factors uniquely. 
Yes. Yes. And but I do expect that this map exists on the level of um, spectrum. Okay. Uh, it's, it's just uh, you know. Um, but then you don't need to invert A anymore. Or? No, you still need to invert A. Why? I mean. I mean, what what should what what should the class even? Let's just think about another class. Ah, you mean by by the? Okay, I understand what you mean. I don't know. So, so I, if I understand your correct question correctly, you say that maybe after going to the one connective cover, the localization is not longer needed. But can you group like right? <laughs> I don't know. Any other questions? Okay, so now you have this. Uh, but now the next drama happens. Um, so you wanted to map this to the K-theory of, of modules, right? But if I invert the abelian variety, what I really you know, should be getting is Z modules finally generated, but then I should invert the class of the abelian variety here as well, right? Otherwise I am getting in trouble how to set up, um, how to set up this map. And this is a big drama because if you think about what k naught of z is, it's just um, the Euler characteristic, right? It's isomorphic to z, and the map is the Euler characteristic. But an abelian variety has Euler characteristic zero. So if you invert an abelian variety, it looks a lot that you have to invert zero, which obviously destroys the whole construction. So ugh, that's a problem. But then you remember, luckily, the linear existed. Uh, <laughs> um, um, and maybe you don't uh, have to use finally generated Z modules. Maybe you can actually remember that there's weights on the cohomology. And this solves the problem because all the different cohomology classes in HI lie in different weights. Yeah. So if you replace this by the K theory of mixed Hodge structures, for example, no more a problem. So mixed Hodge structures in Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, technically it gets a bit more complicated, but then the corresponding class of this in here is no longer zero, which is good. But on the other hand, if you forget the mixed structures, you get back zero. So there's something. Yes, I mean, this might at first seem like that it's a problem, but nonetheless, you can try to get out of this thing in different ways. So I can tell you what, what we'll do is we'll try to extract the weight one part. So this will be like taking a logarithm. This, this will be the next idea. And this wouldn't have been possible on the earlier step because there was no weights. But now this, this will become possible. Okay, good. So this gives you this. Um, yeah, and, but remember, I wanted this to be kind of, this should produce a section, right? That was the idea. But how can this possibly be if um, the thing on the right has this thing inverted? Right, I mean, it's it's a different thing from what I'm starting with. I mean, very different from what I'm starting with. So hmm, that looks like a problem. But this too can be solved. And the thing is, the ring Z has not very many units, right? It's just one and minus one. But Z mod N has a lot of units. Hmm. So you can have the idea, what if I actually, before doing this, I first go to the K theory of mixed Hodge structures, but I remove everything of weight minus two and lower. This is a tensor ideal. I'm using effective Hodge structures, so the only weights I'm having is zero, minus one, minus two, and so on. And now I'm getting rid of all the stuff which has weight minus two and lower. I portion this out. I still to have this, so okay, so I forget this now. To get this map, I still need to invert the image of the abelian variety, right? So I still need to invert the image of the abelian variety. However, in this quotient, it turns out that that's a unit. And so how does that how does that work? Well, what's an abelian variety? Um, I inverted a class in pi naught, so really in k naught. So I just need to compute what the, the image of this class in k naught is in this quotient. But an abelian variety has one connected component, so I get the z in weight zero. And okay, then I get the h in weight minus one. All the higher weights, all the lower weights, I don't see. And this has an inverse, right? Because I can just use z minus h one. Right, that's by the third binomial formula. This is the same <laughs> as this, but this already has weight two, so that's zero. 
And so in this quotient, after getting rid of the weights, this localization is no longer needed. The so question about this is square. Yeah. Square. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's okay. Good. So now this is so that this is great because now this is a unit. Weight minus two. What? Weight minus two. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Science, you know, our do, internal enemy. Why do you use integral hot <laughs> structures? Why wouldn't rational hot structures be enough? Actually, in the next step, we'll have to go to rational host structures. Um, so basically, you send A to H1 and A. Yes, exactly. And this is what I earlier was trying to allude to by saying uh, a logarithm. Because at the moment, what this still goes to, it's, it goes to like Z plus the weight minus one part, which is just like you have always one plus, and then what happens in white one, uh, minus one. And now the next idea is, you just try to project the weight minus one part out of it which if you have a mixed hot structure is just good uh, just good enough to go to the k theory of abelian varieties right you can get this out of the h1 part so that's the logarithm that's that's the logarithm right it's just like chopping off the z part you just get this part and then you see if, if you unravel what multiplication does it's really just turning into addition and taking the multiplicative inverse, which this object was, is just turning to into minus. Now there is still a problem because, um, but yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, never mind. <laughs> there is st still a problem because this, if you want to map on K theory, you need an exact functor, and just extracting the weight minus one part out of an uh, integral host structure is not an exact functor because the torsion messes everything up. You can have different weights and torsion classes traveling around between them that messes this up. But as again, Deline told us, if you go to rational coefficients, this becomes an exact functor. But of course, you go to the price that you don't longer get the abelian variety, you only get it up to isogeny. As some people would call it iso abelian variety. Good. And now we're almost done because the category of abelian varieties, if you invert Q, so what I mean by this is that you tensor all the home groups with Q, it's the same as inverting all isogenies. This, by Poincare reducibility, is an abelian semisymbol. And that means that the K-theory of an abelian semi-simple category, that's very easy, right? Because that's then just the direct sum over all the simples in the category, but the simples are simple abelian varieties, simple, simple, I mean, simples in the category, and then the K-theory of the endomorphism of the simple object. Right? This is the K-theory of any abelian semi-simple category. But at some point, I assume that my abelian variety is simple to start with. So actually, among all these simples, somewhere there will be the, abelian, the class of the abelian variety I've started with. So I can use a projector, project on summoned of our A. OK, and then this goes to the endomorphism ring of this abelian variety, which was just what I had called O. So this goes to K of O, but now I forgot that I had to had to go to rational coefficients. So this will be endomorphism ring tensored, tensored with Q. So also this will be the uh, endomorphism ring tensored with Q. Okay, but I hope that you see now we're reasonably close, right? We're starting, okay, so then we took a one connected cover, but we're starting with the K theory of the endomorphism ring. And going through the entire construction, we ended up with something going to the K theory of the endomorphism ring tensor with Q, which is not what we wanted, but not totally horrible. And do you have a question? Uh, is it the same functor as taking the home out of your the, the mixed such structure presented by your villain, right? This is probably true. What was the question? But so I was trying to whether you can detect it by homing to, yeah. to so that class. you can give this construction in one step and not in two steps. It's probably true. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, so, so maybe just to, to recap, because maybe this was kind of a long construction. So the idea is 
you start with some abelian variety, which to be super interesting, you take with complex multiplication. So you have a lot of endomorphisms, which gives you automorphisms on the ring. And you know, this gets connected to the K-theory of, of um, O. Then you take the abelian variety and you go to Zakharevich K-theory. So you consider this variety, but all these automorphisms on the module earlier, they now turn into actual automorphisms of the variety, which is exactly the morphisms which go into the con construction of Zakharevich K-theory. And now to go out, basically what you're taking is some version of cohomology which must be strong enough to detect weights. I mean, you can see that this can be generalized into various fashions, but you still need to see the weights. And then you extract the weight minus one part from which you can go back to the abelian variety. And the action is exactly the action. I mean, the action induced on this is exactly the geometric action you had on your abelian variety. And this is also, you earlier said, like on abelian varieties, I have more than just these endomorphisms. I also have translations, but I wouldn't be able to see the translations in cohomology, so I wouldn't be able to detect yeah, I, didn't, I didn't mention translations. But I, I, Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. But in fact, varieties have uh, albanese varieties, mm -hmm. so you might maybe shortcut by just using them. Actually, I was going to say this. So, um, um, so the way we actually wrote it in the paper was different. Uh, you could, instead of um, going to mix, mix hot structures, you could at some point say, hey, I also want this result in positive characteristic. And then you somehow need some other calculus where you still have weights because we see that was important, but that's basically good enough. And so what you can do is you can do one motives. They still, you can still extract the um, abelian variety from the one motive. And there is the derived Albanese, El Alp, uh, of Bruno Kahn and Barbier Riviale, and there's also another construction by Ayub. And you can also do that to get to the K-theory of abelian varieties. And then that also works in positive characteristic if the base field is perfect. So yes, you can, uh, you can update this. And this is actually how we wrote it in the text. Any other questions? Okay. Um, yeah, so, so now we need to just to, to, so now we're very close. We just need to fix the last little problem. And this is that we've now all in all have constructed a map which goes from, okay, one connective cover of the K-theory of the endomorphism ring to, okay, one connective cover of the K-theory of O tensored with Q. But of course, if O was just the endomorphisms of the abelian variety, then, um, I know. So let me say it differently. Now, specialize to A being uh, an abelian variety with complex multiplication um, by, by the order O. Yeah. And then O tensor Q is just the field of fractions of that. So, o, um, so this is just F, where F is the CM field attached to this. You can, you know, there are variations. Okay, and now we remember the localization sequence in K-theory, the um, just for O, which was that the K-theory of O has, sits in a fiber sequence to the K-theory of all the finite fields, which are the residue fields. Do you understand what the map is? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, so maybe I should write as proposition. This map, which we've constructed, agrees with map induced by exact functor, which just sends M to M O F. Yeah, because I mean, at some point we, because of this weight one thing, we needed to go to isogenies, which gives you, which means inverting rational things. But if this is the order in a CM field, this is just the same as tensoring up to the CM field. So it turns out that this composite map is something we understand very well. And now there is the localization sequence just attached to uh, the ring of integers, or it also works for an order, doesn't matter. Um, so, which is K of O. For a maximum and, order. Sorry? A maximum order. Yeah, but I think it also works for all order. That's a problem. I mean, for the result, it doesn't matter. So we, we can take a maximal order. Um, 
Um, actually, I think this might work more generally, but it's not important. So let uh, P go through all the primes, right? And there is a fiber sequence for the residue fields attached to the primes going to the CM field, right? This is just the classical localization sequence with respect to uh, four dimension one closed sub uh, schemes. But then, of course, all of these are finite fields. And by equivalence computation of the K theory of finite fields, we know that the one connective cover of the K theory of any connected of any finite field is zero because these groups are all finite. So this means if you now decide to go to rationalize the spectra, then after going to connective cover, this part disappears, and then this part becomes an equivalence, which means that this map up here after going to rational spectra becomes an equivalence, which is exactly what you need to produce a section. And so that's when you take the second connective. Yes. So to make this true, you need to go to another connective cover. This is because uh, just, just because of the boundary map in, in that sequence, it does, it's not sufficient to go to one connective. So you go to the two connective, so I erased our theorem, but if you were wondering why n was at least three, this is exactly because of this, which I can connective covers to have a better life. Um, so from this, you get that the, the map from the two connective cover rationalized is an equivalence. And um, what did I want to say about this? Oli, isn't the map from K of O to K of F still pi one rationally injective? And isn't this enough to construct classes? Um, yeah, it is injective. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, uh, there's, um... So I know what you mean. Like if you spell this out as a, if you go to the long exact sequence, it splices up into things, which makes the maps at the beginning injective. Yeah, yeah, we, we yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There was like, I. Yeah, let me not go into that, but you're right. Uh, Mark once pointed out that there might be a problem with that. <laughs> you did? <laughs> okay. And was it okay as an answer or was this too non-descriptive? <laughs> okay. Um, but it is, um, I mean, I forgot anyway what I want to say now. Um, <laughs> Ah, I still haven't concluded. That's no, you're not done. You're you on yes. the wrong, wrong ring, right? Um, but you're still factoring for VA minus one. So, so now, and, uh, one thing I just wanted to point out, just to avoid maybe confusion, is that we've rationalized at two different places, right? So here, inside of the category, you had to go to tensor Q, and now at the second step, we've decided now also to make the uh, spectrum rational. So sorry for all these rationalizations. We're hoping very much that one can produce an integral version at some point. But at the moment, we don't have that. Good. So now, if you decide because of this equivalence to go to rationalized K theory, all you you get, what you get is, I'll just write it. I mean, so you get a map from K theory of F, the CM field. Uh, so maybe two now. Going to the uh, two truncation of uh, K theory of varieties with the abelian variety inverted. And this goes back to uh, the two uh, connective cover of K of F, everything rationalized. Yeah, so here, everything rationalized. Okay, and now the idea is, as this worked for any abelian variety with CM, um, what you can do is you can just pick a big CM field. So for example, let's just take the cyclotomic fields. They are big. And then we know by Borel's computations of the K theory of a number field that in all these alternating degrees, it's always the number of real places plus complex places and or just one of them, I forgot which one. So this means at any rate, you can produce K groups with a very big rank, as big as you want. And now, so how do you then prove the theorem in the end? So we wanted to prove that all odd K groups of this thing without the localization are infinite dimensional. So what you just do is um, prove by contradiction. So let's just assume this is false and the dimension is M, some finite number. Then what you do is you pick a cyclotomic field, which is of degree, you know, far bigger than M. And then by this construction, you can produce um, 
a more than m dimensional rational subspace in the homotopy groups thing of this thing with a inverted. And then you look at the denominators of a basis. You invert this. So all of these might have, you know, some de denominator by inverting by a. But because this is a finite set of basis vectors, you can pick, you multiply with a sufficiently high power of a. And this moves this into what comes from the un, from the K theory where you didn't have inverted A. And then you've produced a rational subvector space of dimension bigger than M in K of R, and that's the contradiction. And that proves the theory. And so to get the result, so why was the result now? I stated it over the complex numbers, and then I said orally that it's also true over FP bar. So what you need for this is you need a sufficient supply of abelian varieties with complex multiplications. And you know they are always defined over number field, but that number field grows. So if you just decide to work with varieties over C, you're good to go, no problem. And the same with FP bar. And that's it. And now I can just spend the last moment to point out that uh, what I've completely glossed over and uh, didn't say much about it all is I didn't really tell you much about how. So, sorry, one one silly thing. So, is it what you're saying is if you take k n of this k bar with a inverse? Yes, that's just k n of k bar where you then invert a inverse as an element of k naught. Is that what you're saying? Uh, you're, you're you're saying your elements in your k groups. Of this k n bar with a inverse are elements in k n bar with denominators powers of a. So why is that coming that from a naught? And then you can then true I multiply mean, up the top. I'm just asking, is that true? If you take a spectrum and invert something in pi naught, then the homotopy groups are just that's okay. That's true. Okay, that's what I was asking. Great, thanks. Any other questions? So what I glossed over is I didn't really I, I just wrote um, I will not do it. Uh, I just told you that you can have this realization, yeah. So something like mixed touch structures or one motifs, whatever you like, uh, by just sending the class to cohomology, you know, maybe with compact support. I just wrote this, and of course this requires quite some ingredient. And so and the heavy lifting of this was actually done by uh, Campbell. Wilson and Zakharevich. Um, because they constructed an etal and l adic realization of the case of varieties in all degrees. And to do that, they set up a concept is called uh, a W functor. It's a general functor from one of the categories of this type. I have a name, I won't go into it, to an ordinary Waldhausen category. And so this formalism they used to, to create the realization to add attic uh, cohomology and in joint work with uh, Anubhav Nanavati and also Michael, um, we've produced, um, we've used the same formalism to produce realizations to other categories, in particular mixed watch and one motives, and I should also point out that the same was done by Joshua Lieber, who just finished his PhD with Mathilde Macaulay, and these realizations are in slightly different settings. This is with rational coefficients over a very general base, and this is with integral coefficients, but only over perfect fields. And I think I've said enough. Thank you very much for bearing with me.